guys and welcome to How to Gastro. On behalf of the How to Gastro team, I would just like to wish all those out there who are celebrating Christmas a very happy Christmas to you all. And even if you aren't, we'd like to wish you well for the festive season and hope you all have a fabulous new year. So getting to the topic of today, in today's video, we'll be talking about an amphalocele. So let's get right into it. So what is an amphalocele? An amphalocele is a rare abdominal wall birth defect in which the baby's intestines and other abdominal organs are found outside of the baby's body because of a hole in the belly button, which is called the umbilical area. These intestines and other abdominal organs are covered only by a thin membranous sac, which is formed from an outpouching of peritoneum through the umbilicus and can easily be seen at birth. The disease occurs due to a failure of the normal returns of the intestines and other contents back into the abdominal cavity occurring around the ninth week of intrauterine development. So if you look at this picture on my right, we have this baby which was born with an amphalocele and you see bits of the abdominal viscera. So we see the intestines, we can see a bit of the stomach down there and this part here is the liver. So we see all these abdominal organs that is found within the sac and this is actually made up of an outpouching of peritoneum. So the peritoneum is basically like a membranous sac that covers the abdominal viscera and in these newborns, it's visible quite clearly. So something very interesting about an amphalocele is that it occurs at the level of the umbilicus. So at the belly button level, we have these organs protruding and the main portion of the umbilicus will also be stuck within this sac and will also continue out and will be attached to the mum. So this is basically what an amphalocele is. The mechanism of the disease. Abdominal wall defects presenting in the newborn develop during the gestational period. During development, the intestine and other organs, including the liver, bladder, stomach, ovary and testes, develop outside the body into the umbilical cord at first during the 6th and 10th weeks of pregnancy. By the 11th week of development, however, the intestines should return into the abdomen. In babies with an amphalocele, the intestines and other organs remain outside the abdominal wall with the membranous sac covering them. So if you look at this picture on my left, we have a quick set of images that describe the embryology process of the fetus. So if you look from the fifth to the eighth week, we have rapid growth. And at the sixth week, we have the development of the intestines, meaning the mid-gut loop that projects into the umbilical cord. And this is the physiological umbilical herniation because we have a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. And by the 10th week, the intestines should return into the abdomen, usually undergoing a 180 degree rotation. And the total rotation that occurs is 270 degrees. So although it's normal for some of our organs, including the liver, the bladder, the intestines, the ovary, stomach, etc., to develop outside the body, by the 10th to 11th week of development, these organs should return back into the abdominal cavity and continue further development there. But in patients with an amphalocele, this process does not occur for some reason or the other. And therefore, the child's organs develop further outside of the abdominal cavity and are just covered with sort of a membranous sac. So this is the mechanism of the development of the disease. So quite often in children with an amphalocele, we may have other abnormalities. More than two thirds of babies with an amphalocele have abnormalities of other organs or body parts most commonly the spine, the digestive system, the heart, urinary systems, and the limbs. Babies born with an amphalocele frequently have poor lung development, intestines that are slow to handle food, heart malformations, which can be found in approximately 20% of them. They may also have backward Wiedemann syndrome, and this is a condition typified by a large tongue, high insulin, and low blood sugar level. They can also present with umbilical hernias as well as an amphalocele. And they may also have chromosomal abnormalities, including trisomy 13, which is Pateau syndrome, trisomy 18, which is Edwards syndrome, and trisomy 21, which is Down syndrome. The diagnosis of the disease. The amphalocele can be detected by the second trimester of pregnancy during a routine fetal ultrasound. Once discovered, a fetal echocardiogram, meaning an ultrasound of the heart, will also be ordered in order to check for any heart abnormalities before the baby is born. Laboratory studies will show a great elevation of the maternal serum alpha-fetoprotein, which is also associated with abdominal wall defects. 
Once born, the doctor will note the amphalocele and order x-rays to evaluate abnormalities of other organs or body parts. So remember, again, we need to evaluate the limbs because these patients also have abnormalities with their limbs, they have abnormalities with their lungs, and x-rays and other tests such as ultrasound to check the urinary system, etc. can be very helpful to rule out any other abnormalities associated with the disease. And finally, the treatment. An intravenous IV access must be obtained in which IV fluids, nutrition and antibiotics should be administered. In patients with a small amphalocele, the operation will be done shortly after birth to return the organs into the abdomen and close up the opening in the abdominal wall to prevent infection or any tissue damage. In patients with a large amphalocele that involves several organs, the surgery is often done in several stages. The surgery is done in stages because the baby's abdomen will be too small and underdeveloped to hold all the organs at once. So if you remember a few slides back, I said that because these children's organs develop outside the abdominal cavity, the abdominal cavity doesn't have enough space initially in order for all these abdominal organs to fit back into the cavity. Therefore, the operation to fill these organs back into the abdominal cavity is done in several stages so that the abdominal cavity is able to expand in size by different techniques. One is by using a silo in order for the abdomen to adjust slowly and accordingly to prevent any further damage. To fix the symphalocele, the membranous sac is covered with a special man-made material which is then stitched in place to form what is called a silo. As the baby grows over time, the abdominal contents are pushed into the abdomen. When the omphalocele can fit comfortably within the abdominal cavity, the silo is removed and the abdomen is closed. Babies with an omphalocele who have underdeveloped abdominal cavities often have breathing difficulties and may need the help of a ventilator until they can breathe on their own. Ventilation is also essential in these children because, as we said earlier, they usually have underdeveloped lungs as well. So all precautions need to be taken to make sure the child's vitals are stable as well as the amphalocele is being treated in the best possible way. So if you look at these series of pictures down below, in my first picture we see the amphalocele is actually pushed into this silicone bag and this is what we call a silo. And each day, little by little, these organs are pushed within the abdomen, not all at once because the abdominal cavity will not be able to handle all of them. And over a few days, they are pushed slowly, slowly into place. And then the silo is removed and the two flaps of skin are sewn back together. And in this way, the amphalocele can be corrected. And that brings us to the end of this presentation on the amphalocele. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe and share. Hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. If you would like to download a copy of the presentation, you may click the link in the description. Take care and bye for now.